Home prices started a pretty steady decline about five years ago. And government certainly can't fix the entire problem on its own. But it is wrong for anybody to suggest that the only option for struggling responsible homeowners is to sit and wait for the housing market to hit bottom. To hit bottom. That was President Obama in Virginia earlier today, pledging to keep government in the housing game by allowing troubled homeowners to refinance their mortgages through the Federal Housing Administration. The problem is, the FHA is already badly in need of some of its own cash. It's back too many rotten mortgages. And independent analysts predict that it will need a bailout almost any day now. So should the government be allowed to take another whack at housing? Here to discuss are my freedom fighters, Fox Business senior correspondent Dunstan Pryle, Christopher Hahn, former advisor to New York Democratic Senator Chuck Schumer, and Nicole Neely, Independent Women's Forum senior fellow. Nicole, to you first. What business is, the, is it of the governments what the prices of houses are? I thought that was a function of supply and demand. It should be a, fly, a, a function of supply and demand, but it's not the government's business. Right now, the FHA currently guarantees nine out of ten mortgages, and they're doing a rotten job. So why on earth would we want to give them more power and more money? The president admitted, Dunstan, that the, that the government's been trying to fix the housing crisis since he took office in January of 2009, uh, three years ago. It couldn't do it then. What well, makes him think that this will work? You took the words out of my mouth, Judge. This is their third whack at this particular issue. I'm not knee-jerk opposed to government programs that try to help people. I'm knee-jerk opposed to government programs that don't work. The notion that refinancing is, in and of itself, going to help pull the United States out of this housing crisis well, is the balance. Isn't this just a wealth transfer, Chris, because it's going to impose a tax on banks to pay for this. You know, banks have been imposing a tax on anybody who borrows money for a mortgage since banks existed. You pay a huge rate to the bank just to refinance. I just refinanced myself, and, and right. the biggest fee I hope you got a spend, lower rate. I got a much I hope lower rate. the government rate. wasn't involved. I, the government was not involved, but I spent. Right. I, but I will tell Does you Chuck this. Chuck Schumer, no, um, you didn't um, use the government. <laughs> uh, I almost used the government, but I, got, I worked something out where I didn't have to. Oh, right, but right, I, but right. I will tell. But I will tell. I will tell you right now. I have a lot more money in my pocket right now. Money that I'm going to spend in this economy. And there are a lot of people right now that if they had a little bit more money in their pocket. They would spend it on things they need. Is it just a coincidence, Nicole, that the president came out with this eight months before Election Day? Absolutely not. But you know, what, what bothers me that, is that the president is overlooking basic economics. He's only looking at one side of the balance sheet because, yes, a mortgage is, an, is a liability for one side. It's an asset for another side. So why are we cutting into the profits of mortgage companies, the profits of banks? I, I mean, be, it this be, is, it's, Go ahead, Nicole. All right. Wouldn't, wouldn't it be no, better just, all around, Dunstan? Wouldn't it be losers. better all around if if the if housing bottomed out, if these houses reached yeah. their natural level, and then perhaps people that couldn't well, afford them will be able to afford I, them? I take issue with Chris's notion that it's a lot more money on the, uh, from a refinance. I mean, basically what they're talking about is 150, 200 bucks a month. If you're talking about a $75,000 job, one way or the other, a, a win or a loss of that job, that's something you know that's going there's to affect this, the housing there's market. This thing when you do, there's this month, thing when you do a mortgage. It, but, I call it the VIG. It's this money you give to the holding bank. It's about $10,000 on a $300,000 mortgage. It's $10,000 because they hold the money for three days. Right. Well, that's it's not what the government is talking about. It's, it's a scam. No one is suggesting that it's fair, but you can go to another bank if you want. No, no, no. You can't go to another bank if you want. That's the problem. Every bank has this policy. It's fixed, Judge. You should be against it. And the government should get involved. The government should get it, should eliminate it. It should not happen. It should be done away and with. And somebody else will have to pay for it. Because it's the government's money, by the way, they're holding. We're going to switch gears, Chris. Today, Congress got a gloomy visit from the Congressional Budget Office Director Douglas Elmendorf, who warned that spending and entitlement programs will drive the debt beyond. Beyond Chris Hahn, 100% of our gross domestic product, unless Congress does something soon. House Budget Chairman Paul Ryan, who has become the poster child for the GOP's efforts to rein in the debt, audibly sighed in frustration. Of course, if Congressman Ryan wanted to do something about the projected $1.1 trillion budget deficit for 2012, he could have voted against raising the debt ceiling in August, Dunstan Pryle, but he didn't. He said that not only did he vote for the debt ceiling, which to me is just sort of a pro forma measure that became a, a cause celeb last year, what he should have voted for was the Bowles-Simpson report mm. a year and a half ago. That was the first legitimate conversation that Washington seemed to have, bipartisan. Well, don't tell me you're going to agree on this. I, I agree. 100%. Yeah. I, I am a bold Simpson supporter. Yeah. I agree with you 100%. And quite frankly, the time to argue about debt is not in the debt ceiling vote, which is a pro forma vote. Yeah. Chuck Schumer voted in favor of raising the debt. <laughs>
debt it ceiling, is, Mr. It is, Hahn? It is the time to talk about the debt ceiling is when you talk about the budget. So Ryan has voted for all the budgets. Yeah. He's voted for the continuing resolution. Correct. much to blame as anybody. Cor correct. So this is not a Republican versus Democrat argument, Nicole Neely, because the Republicans are the reason the president got to borrow another $2.4 trillion because without their votes, without a deal cut with the Republican leadership in the House, it never would have happened. So who are they to complain and groan or sigh as Congressman <laughs> Ryan did today? Well, yes, he sighed and yes, he screwed up, but at the same time, he does acknowledge that there is a problem. So if, this were, a, if we were in a 12-step spending addiction um, intervention, at least he has taken step one, which is admitting there is a problem. I'm horrified. <sighs> That there are still so many members of Congress that are pretending like this is not a you know, problem. Un unless, Ron Paul, unless Ron Paul becomes president, I just don't see the federal government leaving its addiction to borrowing money. Well, we could have a reason. Hang on, hang on, and spending yeah. that money, Nicole. Am I right? Is it only Ron Paul who would stop this? I yes, I think Ron Paul is the only one who Bill would Clinton stopped it. Bill Clinton, Bill, 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 Bill Clinton had a surplus. I'm talking about amongst the Republicans. The sad well, thing about that. it is that but Representative to... Ryan wasted his credibility. At the time, a year and a half ago, when the Bull Simpson report was out there, he was literally the point man Could have for deficit cutting. Since then, he's voted for a host of measures that would raise the deficit and, and squandered that role. That Paul he had. Ryan could have been the deciding vote in Simpson Balls. It would have had to go to Congress. That's why we were all so vote. disappointed. He did not vote okay, for it. A pox why, on why, his house. Why did, just very briefly, why did the Republicans cut a deal with the White House to let the president borrow $2.4 trillion? Because the Republicans had already authorized that $2.4 trillion when they voted for the budget and the continuing resolution. All right. They were ridiculous to have that fight. It was a ridiculous right. fight to have. Now this is happen. something else we agree on. We've got to stop agreeing, Chris Hahn. Nicole Neely, Chris Hahn, <laughs> Dunstan Proud, thank you for joining us, guys. Did you know that Mitt Romney's team, Chris, you'll love this, reportedly <laughs> considered, yes, we can, for a campaign slogan in 2008? Why the anybody but Obama mentality is a recipe for